Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith, and uh, you know, I brought in all my outdoor plants uh, last week because the temperature dropped below zero and it was the freeze was going to kill them all, so my room is loaded with plants here. And uh, a few days later, uh, you know, we're in high double digit temperatures, uh, that's Celsius, so you know, we hit almost 20 um, multiplied by 9 fifths and add 32 so we hit almost 70 degrees we hit 60 68 six, high 60s anyway 66 68 uh, and it's going to be this warm uh, for the next week so I'm using this opportunity to do a lot of outdoor work on on my house including um, you know including uh, at putting some new flat roofs on uh, but anyway, uh, let's get back to talking about the Arctic and what's happening in the Arctic. So we've got insanely warm Arctic Ocean waters that are delaying the freeze up and pouring heat into the atmosphere. So here's an idea of some of the temperatures, 2 meters, 6.6 uh, .6 feet above the Earth's surface temperature anomalies. You know, look at these huge temperatures here, you know, 20 degrees Celsius uh, warmer than warmer than normal. Of course, in September, the sea ice reached its second lowest extent on record, but uh, it hasn't been um, forming, forming as it normally would. So here we go. 2012 was the lowest minimum extent on record. This is extent. And here's what we had. Uh, 2020 was the second lowest, but then the curve just stayed flat right out to here. So it was way, way behind, uh, you know, it was set, set record lows ev ever in, um, in October. And uh, just in the last, uh, you know, the last week or so, it's actually shot up. Okay, but the main factor for the delay is the ocean heat. Okay, the ocean is super warm, so, you know, the water, the super warm water will give off a lot of heat into the atmosphere. And then that'll be because of mixing and wave action. It's replaced by warmer water from below. So eventually, you know, you have to get a whole sort of layer, top surface layer, to cool down below zero, below freezing point of seawater. Below zero would, if it would be zero Celsius, if it was fresh water, but it's about 1.8 degrees Celsius uh, for freezing point of uh, seawater. Okay. Um, and uh, so in the Laptev Sea, um, off Siberia, five degrees Celsius warmer than normal, um, or, or, or climbed higher, five degrees Celsius absolute temperature, or 41 degrees Fahrenheit. It's insanely warm for the Arctic Ocean, especially in that region, far away from any warmer inflow from the Atlantic or Pacific. Okay, uh, you know, winds and waves have mixed some of that heat down into the water column, and that heat needs to be lost to the atmosphere. So the ice isn't forming. So this is a this is a run. Um, you can see, you know, the dates here. So it's a forecast uh, going out to the uh, 13th of so basically the first two weeks of. November, and you can see these warm temperatures. Greenland's here, so it's all on the, the Russian side, the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf, the Laptev Sea, just, uh, you know, super warm temperatures, anomalies, and uh, that's been blocking off the, the freezing, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, there's lots of uh, other information there. You know, make sure you have a look at these uh, these these articles you can just you, this is all open source you can just look at google the title large parts of arctic ocean see delayed refreeze with sea ice at record low so here's an image of an icebreaker and it's supposed to be breaking ice but there's very little ice to break this is a northern sea route which goes hugs the coast of siberia and uh you know it's just not uh those areas that would historically be covered with sea ice are basically ice-free. This is Zach Labe, who does those wonderful images. And I showed you, um, you know, this is, I showed you his Twitter feed, you know, a couple things in his Twitter feed. There's all kinds of good graphics. And there was a very good interview uh, with uh, Nick Breeze. I highly recommend it. Um, 
with Zach and uh, you know all these all these great graphics he posts so so here he is um, okay so here he is and he was talking about okay so this is a lap to have sea ice up now now this article was um, from October 29th okay so we've had a, another week since and I'll show you the graphs the updated graphs but this is up until the end of October, the ice was delayed in freezing. This is the extent in the Laptev Sea. This is the extent in the Siberian Arctic. Almost, you know, these are all the other years. There's nothing close. Like, the, you know, this year is nothing. Like, this, the ice just wasn't freezing in those periods. You know, the uh, dark water in the, uh, in, the, in the summer, open water, absorbed heat. And uh, it went down deep into the reed, into the water, and wouldn't allow the ice to freeze. So here's the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf, the Eastern Siberian Sea, Laptev Sea. So those regions just uh, very, very delayed in in freezing. Um, and they didn't; uh, these regions here didn't freeze up in the uh, you know as winter approached. These regions were open. So if you go back to have a look here, um, I'll scroll up. Okay, you can't see it here, so I'll have to go to the, um, I'll show you the images of where the freeze up is. And the freeze up was, was much delayed. And the freeze up here is much delayed and the thawing was much earlier than normal. So it was hit on both ends and this is bad because the whole water, the whole region, the water column over these over these continental shells um, is is warm and that warmth goes into the sediment and uh, destabilizes the the methane hydrates talk more about that in a, in a minute okay so this was a ship expedition that was looking at the uh, that was there looking at the uh, as the ice was melting in the spring the problem is is that when you warm up that water over those regions, then the Arctic methane deposits start to release, scientists say. And this was, uh, this was from late October, this article, and it was flagged uh, by various you know, Facebook, etc., as having you know, not verified information. Um, and, uh, but you know, this is uh, high levels of potent greenhouse gas of methane were detected down to a depth of 350 meters in the Laptev Sea. Now this is significant uh, because uh, previously they were, this was seen over the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf and now over the Laptev Sea. So it, you know, the, the, the slope sediments have a, contain a huge quantity of frozen methane and other gases known as hydrates. Methane has a warming effect. It's actually 86 times stronger than CO2 over 20 years. The USGS said it's, you know, Arctic hydrate destabilization is one of the four most serious scenarios for abrupt climate change. Okay, so these bubbles, most of the bubbles coming up were dissolved in the water column before reaching the surface and that made methane level, but methane levels at the surface were still four to eight times higher what, what they would normally be and they then tap into the, into the atmosphere. So this is extremely concerning um, you know uh, they looked at a, an area a slope area 150 kilometers in length 10 kilometers wide they saw clouds of bubbles released from the sediment you know it on at one location on the Laptev sea slope at a depth of 300 meters they found methane concentrations um, 400 times higher uh, than would be expected if the sea and atmosphere were in equilibrium so instead of Instead of four nanomoles per liter methane concentration, they measured 1,600 nanomoles per liter concentration of methane. These discharges, Igor, this is Semelitov, Russian Academy of Sciences. He's the chief scientist on board. The discharges were significantly larger than anything found before. Okay, so, you know, and he mentions the Atlantification, the warming of the water, on the all the way to the bottom over the continental shells you know Peter Wadhams discussed this years and years ago you know this is these are long this guy's been studying this area for two decades 
And, you know, he previously reported the methane being released from the shelf of the eastern Siberian Arctic shelf. And now, now this is tremendously more, this is much more. And there's actually crater-like pockmarks in the shallow parts of the Laptev Sea and eastern Siberian Sea that are discharging bubble jets of methane. So these are areas of the seafloor that have high, are loaded with hydrates. Of, the hydrates are, are, are uh, thawing out, releasing the methane, and uh, you know the st there's no structural integrity. So we're getting large uh, craters forming on the seafloor. This is similar to the craters and sinkholes reported from inland Siberia tundra, the tundra which, we, which I've talked about. You know, temperatures in Siberia, 5 degrees C, higher than average from January to June. So, you know, an anomaly that was made at least 600 times more likely by human-caused emissions of CO2 and methane. Okay, so this is a huge problem. This is the areas we're talking about again. Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf over here, Laptev Sea over here. And there's a good topographic image here. Um... You know, you can see the vast size of the Eastern Siberian Arctic Shelf and the Laptev Sea here. So lots of um, methane bubbling up in this region, and now also it's being recorded in this region. And you can see, you know, you can see these continental shelves all around the Arctic are extensive, and you can see that, um, you know, the methane on them is, is, is tremendous. And the Yamal Peninsula might ring a bell to people because that's where a lot of these on-land sinkholes uh, were formed from collapsing um, ground, releasing huge methane bursts, even explosions uh, reported. Okay, so, you know, it's well worth looking at the topography of the Arctic, trying to figure out, you know, you know, trying to see, you know, where the methane is coming from and then looking at methane in the air and trying to correlate it to specific um, sinkholes, etc. You know, so Robert Hunziker wrote about a troubling discovery in the Arctic about the methane coming out and about the, um, the report, the research ship Academic Keldish, which was actually the ship that appeared in the movie The Titanic. Okay, awaking the sleeping giant, the methane hydrates in the Arctic. Uh, you know, mainstream science has talked down the risks of a massive methane breakout for many years. They, you know, the USGS three years ago, Carolyn Ruppel very much downplayed the, the problem. Um, but, you know, now we're, the measurements on the ground or, you know, in the Arctic are showing that the methane is coming up to with more and more uh, ferocity, more and more bubbles, more larger quantities over more widespread areas. So forewarned is forearmed. You know, this is what we have, uh, you know, clouds of bubbles. Uh, you know, that's a heck of a lot of methane that's coming up from the seafloor. Uh, of course, Arctic sea ice graphs are a great go-to site, and you can see you know, here is where we were with the extent, but it suddenly shot up. In the last week or so, it's shooting up at extremely high rates. That's not too surprising. As soon as that water temperature at the surface goes below zero, the ice can grow extremely quickly. You know, thin ice can grow extremely, extremely quickly because ice is an insulator. The air temperatures are cold above, and, the, you know, the, the ice is, and the ice is very thin, and then the ice can form extremely rapidly. You can look at ice growth over time and, and this is to be uh, expected. Uh, of course, when the ice is all gone, we have the, we'll have the blue ocean event. And, uh, and uh, I just want to show you, you know, this is Zach's uh, sea ice figures. Just look at his uh, site. I want to point out this is some of the uh, this, this is the forum, basically, one of the forums on Arctic sea ice. And you can, let's look at the Laptev Sea extent. Um, and we'll also look at the East Siberian Sea extent. So this is East Siberian. So you can see that it, it thawed a lot earlier and it's freezing a lot later. This is very bad for the methane. Also, the Laptev Sea thawed a lot earlier and it's freezing a lot later, so the, the, the duration is a lot longer, very bad for the methane 
Thanks for listening.